welcome to my bench. This is the main spring barrel that I just made. And uh, there's the rivet for the main hook, the hook that, for the spring. And there's the keyhole slot for the cable coming in to the fusee. And uh, so let's go ahead back down into the shop, jump back in time and take a look how I made it. I'm facing off this brass barrel right now, but I put it, it's in a four jaw chuck and the OD was kind of wavy. So now I'm just gonna put a little bit of a cut in here on the out OD just to get an idea. And yeah, I got it in pretty good uh, considering it was so wavy. Take one more pass here. Yeah, that's looking good. But now we're using a boring bar. It's uh, kind of small, uh, but I took quite a few uh, spring passes uh, just to make sure. And uh, the uh, uh, this uh, piece of pipe is uh, a little bit heftier than what it was needed. So for a couple extra passes, it's not going to bother anything. Yeah, so uh, doesn't look so good in the camera, but that's actually a fairly good in uh, good punch. So I changed the setup over. Now we're going to hold it from the uh, from the inside so that I can do the OD now. And uh, we're using the uh, uh, indicator there and get it in good. There we go, get the outside looking nice. Yeah, there we go. Now I need to reverse the barrel and uh, we'll face it off here till we get it to length, uh, make the barrel to the correct length. Yeah, it feels pretty good. All right, let's just check it really quick here. Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. And now we'll just go ahead on to making the end caps. We started with a quarter inch piece of brass here and I'm marking it out in the dicum. Get ready, we'll take it over to the bandsaw. And you've seen this in one of my other videos. This is how I make my uh, uh, blanks for cutting gears and so on and so forth. The end caps are really no different. takes a while and I've speeded it up. Now I take it over to the sander just to get it down closer to the line so the interrupted cuts aren't so bad on the lathe. Just kind of cleans it up a little bit, makes it a little easier for me. I'm gonna put it on a super glue arbor. The arbors, I store them uh, with the old glue on them so that I, I don't have to worry about oxidation. And now we're cleaning out the grooves. And I kind of am fond of these uh, super glue arbors. They work really well. There's a little super glue. You gotta be careful not to put too much in there. But if your grooves are deep tooth, any excess will go in the grooves and won't bother it. But there you go. Clean up the OD. Yeah, almost there. We got one more, couple one more pass. Let's take a look at it then. Yeah, there we go. Put some dicum on the edge there. And then of course we'll center drill it. twist drill and put it in there and open it up just below uh, the 3 8 that we're looking for and there's a 3 8 inch reamer there to finish the job off with a little bit of oil. The oil makes the finish a little nicer I think. Just scribe on our line for our, uh, uh, our indent cut here and uh, we'll cut a little bit out of here and I won't show you the entire cut process but that's pretty much what it looks like. I want the barrel to uh, fit nicely on there, so we'll give it a shot. Yeah, there we go. That's that's nice. And go over to the mill with the end cap. Now we're going to we got the uh, end cap on the barrel. And now we're putting the holes in where we're going to be putting our uh, 080 uh, cap head screws in there to hold it in place. Kind of a delicate uh, drill here with this uh, this little drill bit. Got to keep cleaning it off or you're going to snap the drill bit. Yeah, it's looking good. Right, when I'm done here, I'll take the cap over to the vise 
and then I'm going to uh, uh, to do some more drilling into this uh, into the barrel. And I'll open the uh, open that hole to the bolt diameter, and then I'll put a countersink in for the cap head screw. Now we're over at the vise with the with the cap still on the super glue arbor you can notice that and i'm using my little hockey puck to do that uh, 080 tap in there uh, i've got it sped up a little fast there so uh, that's not how fast i do it and i got a propane torch and i'm back just taking this cover off now it goes into the lacquer thinner bath and we get that super glue off of there any dicum that might be left and uh, that little spill there, that'll be okay. That's glass, it's on glass. I'll clean the glass up when I'm all done. But I use this uh, little, I do the uh, lacquer thinner in between every process I do, each one of the grits on the sandpaper or when I'm polishing, as soon as I'm done, it goes right back into the lacquer thinners. I'm sanding now on that piece of glass with uh, the 320 and I'll go all the way up to 800 grit. And then uh, we'll go over and we'll uh, use some cut and compound uh, on the, uh, the buffer here. I just recently added that six inch extension onto my uh, buffer and notice all the stitching in the on the muslin pad there that makes it very stiff and uh, it's 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 buffing out all the scratch marks from the sandpaper uh, right around 800 with the cutting compound that I use on here right now I'm just heating it up uh, and so now I put a little triply in there with it uh, it's a cut and collar compound now I'm ready to go and I do that about every 30 seconds and right behind it, I have this dental lathe uh, with a uh, three inch diameter, 40, but it's no, there's no stitching in it. It's a loose one. This is where I do my final polishing. And I use a jeweler's rouge. There you go. And uh, I, I just started using the smaller one. Normally, I wouldn't be doing this this early in the build, but I, this is a new uh, buffing wheel that I'm trying out. I normally, I had a six incher in there. Now I'm trying this three incher out just to see how it goes. Seems to be uh, much easier to work with and stuff, but we'll see. Now we're back over at the mill. I use that little wobbler to find the center of my holes that I drilled earlier. Uh, because in between two of those holes, I'm going to be drilling another hole and uh, we're making a keyhole slot. So there we go. So now let's find the center between the two holes and put a little dicum down. There we go. And a twist bit here. And we'll make a little hole in here. And this will be uh, what we'll use to start to make our keyhole slot with a series of uh, small files. Just slowly working that slot out. And we get out a little bit further. Now we want to start angling it over. We want the cable to come out of there on a soft angle. You don't want a hard angle that might fray the cable. You want that cable to last for a while. Uh, so uh, there we go. Now I'm kind of angling it out a little sandpaper here just to clean it up and uh, go back at it again. Get that nice uh, soft angle that I'm looking for. And there's the cable. Stick it in there and get a look. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think that's coming out of there quite nicely. And now we just finish off the cable. Now the cap will go back over to the mill because we're gonna put a relief underneath that hole we just, uh, that key slot, so that there's uh, room to put the uh, end stop on that cable. So I'm just using an end mill here to bring it down to give me myself a little bit more room on the end of that cap. Now we need a hook to hold the end of the mainspring. So uh, I didn't get, W.R. Smith says use a, uh, a screw, uh, a 1032 screw, but I decided to make a screw here, uh, making it out of drill rod. So we're getting down to the major diameter here um, so that I can get a, a die on it. The size of this is a really big uh, mainspring, so uh, I want a very stout uh, hook on the end of it here. All right, that should do it. Yeah, that's good. So now we just put a die on there and put some threads into it. some threads in there real quick. There we go. And 
and now I'm going to cut the angle like a uh, uh, like the store-bought screw would have. Uh, I know that's not normally the way that you'd use a hook in a barrel like this, uh, but that's what W.R. Smith uh, recommends, so I decided to keep with it. So we're cutting off now. There we go. I could have gone down to the store and bought one, but I probably finished this in 10 minutes, so I uh, saved myself a little bit of time. go back over to the mill again and I centered it all up and now we're going to put a hole in there that we can tap and tap it with a 1032 hole here and now you got the, I got the screw in there now I got it back in the lacquer thinners again like I said I use the lacquer thinners a lot in between but we're cleaning it up because I just put that screw in with uh, Loctite and I put some tape on there and now I'm just cleaning it up and cutting it off with a back with a hacksaw on the back side here. Turned out that hacksaw was near not nearly as sharp as I thought it was, but I did after I finished this I did change the blade. Okay, so now I got a, a, a two inch now. This is in real time. This is the amount of time it took me because you when when you when I rivet something in, I take my time. And you, each one of the, almost each one of those hits is placed just where I want it to mushroom out what I need. I'm using the uh, ball end of a of a, four, a small ball peen hammer, and uh, I'm uh, mushrooming out the ends there. And uh, I got the tape around there to kind of watch what I'm doing. But I want, and I also put a little bit of a flange in there, so I'm uh, actually hitting it to the flange. There we go. And take a look every, you know, just to see how I'm doing. And just small little taps, nothing, nothing big, uh, you know. Uh, you don't want this is not something that I wanted to get done in like two hits. Uh, this takes just a little bit of time, and uh, just so that you know, uh, this is an important thing to hold that big spring. So I want you to see exactly how long it took. So I've done no cutting or editing to this. I just uh, and didn't didn't speed it up or slow it down. Most of the time I'm trying to keep my uh, videos to about 15 minutes. Uh, so, but not here, I'm gonna go the full length here. I'm almost done now. You can see I move away a little bit of that stuff. And that's what it looked like when I was done. Now, it goes in back into the vise and uh, I peeled away a little bit more of it. Now, I, this is like uh, my second shot with a file and it's going a little bit faster than what I'm actually doing it at. Uh, but I take my time. Uh, mostly it's uh, not that much draw filing, it's mostly regular uh, uh, just filing. Just to get it down flat and get it into a, a nice shape that looks good. And, and I'm using a, uh, a, a zero file. Small one. Now it's back to the sanding again. And I do the same thing I started. This one I started with 220 and went all the way up to 800. I'm back over at the buffing wheel here and I'm uh, heating up the brass here. Normally I have a set of lights that I keep the brass under if I'm using four, doing four or five pieces and the lights warm them up and keep them warm. If you don't warm them up, you end up with black streaks on there uh, from the cutting compound. Once it gets warm, those black streaks just disappear. There's a cutting compound. And now we're ready to do a little bit of uh, uh, cutting. Now I'm back over to the Baldor two-speed uh, dental polishing lathe. And um, I'm really starting to like this three inch wheel much better than the six inch wheel I had there. Um, it seems to be, it's much easier to handle. I like it. Uh, I think the, the lathe likes it too. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That new wheel's nice. And there's the finished product. We're back up in the office again. And uh, there's the keyhole slot. And over here, there's your rivet for the uh, mainspring hook. 
and uh, normally I wouldn't be polishing stuff up and it's still going to be polished it's uh, much better than that when I'm done but now the next thing we got to do is put this spring in there it's a pretty hefty spring we'll build an arbor put it on the arbor and then put it inside the uh, mainspring barrel I'll be using this uh, Webster uh, mainspring winder to do that and uh, it's always uh, fun to play with these big springs and uh, Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. Let me see if I can get you a better look at that uh, Webster Mainspring uh, winder. Next video, I'm going to take a break from the clock build uh, because a, one of the viewers uh, uh, showed me a really interesting tool that uh, deals with hobbing and gear making. Uh, and I kind of wanted to uh, take a little bit of time and make this tool and play around with it a bit and see what I can learn. And uh, with any luck, I'll uh, take it and... Uh, uh, make a nice video that you can kind of see what I was doing with it and so that'll be the next video uh, but I want to thank you all for watching and I wanted to once again close with some good books that I use here uh, this one here this first one that's by W.R. Smith and that's the manual for building this clock that I'm building right now and uh, it's very well set up and uh, most of what you see you know what I'm doing is comes right from that book and then here's another book on uh, clock building, clock repair work uh, from the 1950s, uh, De Carlo, but it's still in print today and you can still buy it. Uh, but what makes it interesting is it has uh, uh, one, two, three, and four, five, I believe. Yeah, four or five chapters on how to build a fusey uh, timepiece. And so. Uh, uh, it fills in a little bit with uh, W.R. Smith, and uh, it, it varies from him in different ways, uh, uh, like on the hook on, on the mainspring this time. But thanks a lot for watching. I hope I'll see you next time.